Hi everyone. I hope you are doing well. In the .NET series, this is the third video. In the previous video, we installed the .NET and we created one simple application, SP.NET MVC. In this video, we will see the folder structure, whatever created into the SP.NET Core web application. We will see what is www root folder, what is program.cs, what is app setting.json, launch setting.json, analyzer and connected services. Let's move to the folder structure. That is actually the sp.net core MVC application. So it was just created using the default template of the .NET. In the solution explorer, you can see different files. We'll go through to all these files. So first see what is WW root folder in sp.net core. This is actually the folder. Here you can see the different files CSS, JS, JS, LIB. In the library file we have different jQuery folders jQuery uh, validations and bootstrap again in the bootstrap you can see CSS so all these all these are the static files so we can put all the static file inside the www root folder here all static files are now located inside the www root folder so the the www root folder is the root of the website static files can be stored in any folder under the www root you can create more folder inside this folder here you can put the images videos and all the static contents like fonts and other kind of static files but the code should be placed outside the www root you may have the question can I uh, create the different root folder instead of the www root so how can we create the different root folder so if you go into the program.cs this is the builder in the create builder you can pass the name of the root folder how can we achieve it you can see here in the create builder I pass the one optional parameter with new web application options and I given the name web root path equals to my app path I added this folder and removed the existing I run the program so it successfully launched the browser therefore we can rename the www root next question what is the program.cs file in sp.net core so this is the program.cs this is the entry point of sp.net core this file contains the application startup code so whatever code you can see these are the startup code here you see first services here you can see the services whatever services you can add here currently in the default template it has only one method add control with add controllers with views and after that you can see the different delegates so actually what happening here let me explain you in the program.cs first line here it initializes a new instance of the wave application builder class with pre-configured defaults this is the just initialization and we get the and we get the instance of web application builder in the next line add services to the containers so this is the collection of the services here we can add more services we will see how can we add dependency injection I will explain later but in this video we just going through the folder structure so collection of the services for the applications to compose this is useful for adding user provided or framework provided services next one is the build after all this configuration we need to build the web application so using the build method we can create the web application so this gives the instance of the web application 
now after building the applications we add all these methods what are all these methods these are the middleware means you can say these are the software these are the series of the programs and each program has their own functionality these all these programs would be added in the sequence and finally we call the run run the application and block the calling thread until host shut down means after after if you try to add the middleware that would not be executed so run is the final call to launch the applications i hope you understood about the program.cs this is just an entry point adding some services and um, middlewares or you can say a request pipeline we are adding i will explain more details about the pipeline and middleware next one is the what is app settings.json file in sp.net core if you see app setting.json in the previous framework if you have worked so you have seen the web config now in the .net we don't have the web config we have the json file app settings here you can put the key value pair like the app settings and so many configurable item you can put into the web app setting.json so this is just like the web config but now extends is the json so the app setting.json file is an application configuration file used to store configuration settings such as database connection strings and any application scope global variable etc next one is the launch.setting.json what is that file so what is launch setting.json file in sp.net core launch.setting used to store configuration information contains only those settings that required to run the application that's it we put the we we put the settings that would be helpful to run the application is only used on the local development machine is not deployed contains profile settings if you see this file and here you can see as express and in the profile you can see module name with the url so you have two different url so if you go on this button suppose i want to use the as express so this is the setting for as express i can change the execution method from here so if i click on this arrow you can select the as express and as per this configuration this should be the url 18601 so let's run this one and you will see this url here this is the url let me close it now let me choose the method learn.net now let me run it this this would be the url now you can see this is the url and you can change the attributes whatever you want dot net and message you, you want to display or not launch browser whatever configuration your attributes you can configure here so this is just a configuration to launch the applications into the sp.net core next one is you can see dependencies in the dependencies you you have the analyzer what is the analyzer in sp.net core so, so many analyzer are there if you are coding something and this give the warning or some suggestions so these are the analyzer like in controller if i see wh whatever namespace you can see here sometime you add some class but namespace is not there so it will give the suggestion list what the namespaces would be there you can just select and uh, namespace would be added here so this kind of thing you can see in the analyzer so the analyzer find potential issues and suggested is fixes for them they help you maintain high code quality the analyzer package notifies you of any controller action that returns an undeclared status code 
in the dependency apart from the analyzer you can see framework so you can see two framework one is the microsoft.net core app and on the top of that we use sp.net core so so there is a dependency between them next one is what is connected services in sp.net core if you remember in the previous uh, in the previous dotnet framework you added services web services all these thing we can add here we can add the cloud services as well so the connected services is a collection of the tools in visual studio that help you connect your applications to the following so you can add the azure services you can add add open api endpoints you can add grpc remote procedure call wcf i hope you are familiar with wcf and databases and data providers all these thing we can add inside the connected services in upcoming video i will show how can we add services that's all in this video in the next video we will see about the what is the meaning of these methods and what is the name these are actually middleware and what is the importance of the middleware and how can we create the request pipeline using the middleware i will explain in the next video that's all in this video happy learning